Greetings programs. Today we're going to talk about XDR or extended detection and response. So let's just hop right in and get going. Okay. First, we're going to cover the hype aspect of it. Then we'll get into some background information about attacking and defense and all that sort of thing. And we'll discuss some recent developments. We'll go into what well, you know, what does XDR look like functionally? And then we'll I'll give you a demo. And then we'll wrap up with uh, just a brief discussion of near future capabilities. All right, the hype. So right now we're at the peak of the hype cycle for XDR. And that means that for the next couple of years, every new security product that comes out, is going to have a pow. X, now with XDR stamped on the outside of the box, whether it's really an XDR thing or not. So we're just going to have to put up with that. So that's okay. Well, we're going to talk about what XDR really is right here. Okay, so we know you, you can't stop all the attacks. You know, at some point you're going to have to you're going to get breached and you're going to have to respond, right? So EDR really showed, you know, great efficacy, just the architecture of EDR and how it works. And so what's happened is that that architecture has been replicated across different technology domains, such as identity and, and network. And what XDR wants to do is you want to be able to take all of this, these different tech, these different domains where you have these controls and, and respond holistically, right? Uh, that sounds straightforward enough. <laughs> okay, red versus blue. Let's get into it. So MITRE ATT&CK is a framework that allows us to have vocabulary and structure around what attackers are doing in order to accomplish their goals. So at a very high level, they're going to go out and they're going to prepare, which means they're looking for vulnerabilities that can be exploited. And once they've, they've, they've done that, they're going to go ahead and, 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 and act. And when they've started to act, they're going to gain initial access. Usually it's going to be through email. Most of the time, it's going to be an email attachment or something like that. And once they, they gain that initial access, they're going to attempt to move laterally inside the uh, victim's infrastructure. They're going to try to compromise more systems. They're going to enumerate uh, the infrastructure and resources that are available. And once they've gathered enough information, they're going to go ahead and put fire on the target and do what they came to do, whether that's exfiltrating data or remote control or uh, encrypting files and sending a ransom letter, whatever it is, they're, they're going to do that. And the thing that's important to understand is that can happen in a matter of hours because of automated tooling. Like I've, I've seen Ryuk attacks from start to finish take like two and a half hours, breathtakingly fast. Now, if you're lucky, maybe initial access provider first gets in and then there's a brief period of time where they're selling you to the highest bidder where you might have an opportunity to to uh, detect, identify that you've been breached. But uh, potentially that this could take hours from start to finish for them to do what they want to do. So we go a little deeper. One of the really cool things about MITRE is everything is broken down at an atomic level to TTPs. So that's tactics, techniques, and procedures. And these can be used to fingerprint an attacker or a tool and they can, it can be done programmatically which is really useful so this is the the, the this is the underlying basis uh more and more of uh, application software that does detection okay pickerel the defenders and this is supposed to be blue and not red but i made a mistake that's okay let's just keep going all right so we normalize into a simple simplified view of pickerel which is a sans incident response framework and our preparation basically consists of identifying risks and then putting controls in place to compensate, mitigate, eliminate those risks, et cetera, right? And there's all kinds of controls. There's guards, gates, and guns. Uh, there's procedures, things like that. But in this case, we're probably, for the most part, talking about technology-type tools, right? Like endpoint detection response tool or uh, email, firewall, identity, things like that. So you have a whole pile of these things and you've deployed them in your in your infrastructure and you're using them to monitor things and, and prevent attacks and all sorts of stuff like that. So for the sake of argument, you've been breached. So what's really important, of course, is to identify as quickly as possible that you have been breached. Because the quicker you identify, obviously, the better. And then secondly, once, once you identify you've been breached, the next step, and this, this is the most critical step, in my opinion, is you have to get containment. So that's you know you have to figure out how far they spread within your infrastructure and you've got to stop them from spreading further you've got to draw a box around them 
and prevent them from being able to move around any further and take over any other systems or gather any more information or control anything that they control. You need to contain them. And then once you've done that, you know, the worst of it is over, hopefully. And you can begin the process of er 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 eradication and recovery. So eradication is just, that's going to be a whole lot of probably imaging machines and things like that and just cleaning up the mess. The thing that's important to appreciate is typically you'll see this happen on a, on a time scale of days, right? So that the attacker's operating in hours, defender's operating in days. There's a huge asymmetry here, which is why attackers have been so successful. All right, so putting a little, little more detail on this, right? You can see that we have recovery and lessons learned, which normally, you know, we don't consider those part of XDR. However, I think that recovery is going to become part of the discussion in a, as an emerging capability. We're, we're going to cover that at the very end. Okay, this is why defenders operate on such a long time scale. And the reason is you have all these different tools, right? And you're trying to respond. So with that, what does that normally look like in real life? What it looks like is typically like a video call and you have people coming and going and you have an incident commander who is then orchestrating and directing all of these experts on their tools. Let me talk to the EDR guy. Let me talk to the firewall guy, et cetera. And they're, they're going through all of this, trying to get control of the situation and begin the process of remediation, communicating, having the communication plan, talking to everyone who needs to talk, be talked to and all that sort of thing. And it's usually, it's a, it's a very uh, high effort. It's a cumbersome process. People don't sleep for days. And that, that's why we're quite so slow. Okay, so how do we tame this? How do we try to get this under control? So initial attempts, sims are awesome. They're great because they allow you to take observables and look inside of your database where you've collected logs from all your different tools and you're able to cross reference that observable and find relationships and you know, begin to see a bigger picture of what's going on. So that's like great. And I didn't put threat hunting on here, which I should have because um, identifying uh, threat hunting is like your best bet for uh, getting early identification. And I'm going to fix this slide. So, so it's great for threat hunting, still awesome for that, but it can't, this can't respond for you, right? This, this is useful for kind of going and trying to figure out what's going on and it can do correlation, which is great. And then, so let's talk about the response. You have source, which, uh, uh, I ideally would allow you to have an orchestrated response. So for example, you could say, okay, isolate these endpoints, uh, put these firewall rules in, change this email processing policy, and you could just have the tool do it for you in an automated fashion, which is, which is helpful, right? And then this to me is the real game changer, which is the, the power of the REST API. So there's a couple things about it that's really cool. So first is, uh, REST APIs, you actually get structured data in a JSON format, right? Logs that go into SIMS are typically two-dimensional, it's just rows and columns. And you're in order to find a relationship in those rows and columns, you have to have queries, and that's why SIMS have specialized languages, right? Whereas with a REST API, you're going to get a JSON object where that structure is inherent within the data itself, right? You have a structured set of attribute and value pairs. And additionally, if you want to gain more information, you can interactively use the API to go and query the source of that information for more details, right? Super useful. And the other nice thing too, is you can take this information you're getting back and then work with it and then use it as a basis to go out and program another tool. So tools can program tools. And this gives you the opportunity to develop some really interesting distributed systems architectures if you're into that sort of thing. Very, very important development. Okay, but what about prioritization? We didn't talk about that in any of this. We're, I'm 10 minutes in this talk, haven't talked about it. And this is a huge problem. Any of these tools, you go in there, and there's just this huge list of stuff and you're trying to figure out what's noise and what's real. And that's why you have what are called junior SOC analysts because it's literally their job to sit there and try to answer that question and sift through the noise every day, right? So this, this is a big problem. Okay. Here we are, XDR. Let's talk about how it's different and how it solves these problems. So first off, we know we're using APIs to communicate with all of our control points. And instead of going into a SIM, we're going to go into a data lake. And then that data, all that data is going to go into the uh, data lake. And the analytics engine is now going to look at this and it's going to try to create a normalized baseline of what's, what 
what things are supposed to look like. And if something doesn't look right, then the tool is automatically going to go and query these sources to get more information. And it will automatically process that and perform an inve automated investigation. If the result of that investigation is determined that this is, this is a real incident, then the analytics engine is going to automatically generate an incident and it's going to be prioritized based on the asset value and the risk. And so by the time the actual SOC analyst is putting eyes on this, they have a prioritized list of incidents. They can open the incident. There's already been some automated investigation that's been done, so they can go in there and quickly determine what's the scope of this, what's the, you know, uh, you know, how big is this, when did this start, all that sort of thing, and then begin the act of responding. And what's great is now, once they've decided they're going to go ahead and, and go into response mode, the response is collaborative, so people can come in and all plug into the tool, and you have playbooks. You have an incident response playbook, and as you're stepping through that playbook, the actual automated actions are wired into the playbook. So if you have a step in your playbook that says, we're gonna remediate X, there's gonna be a button there that the operator can click, right? And when they click that, it's actually gonna kick off an immediate or uh, an automated action on the back end. So that's where our SOAR lives now, is it's, it's still there as an automation, but now it's just, you're just wiring it right into the playbook. And then what's really cool too is, you're going to have like a timeline of events that the incident commander can keep an eye on. And that allows them to have situational awareness without having to interrupt people so much. And so that's, that's, that's what, that's really kind of the, the soup to nuts of the, how this is better. So to summarize, to take everything we've talked about and just drop it into kind of one page, XDR equalizes operating tempo. Okay. So what we're doing is we're now automating the process that the attackers are automating and that allows us to respond much more closely to the tempo that they're operating at, which means you're going to get better outcomes. All right. So let me do a quick demo. I'm not going to show you the, the whole thing because that's too much. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take you through, just briefly walk you through an incident. Okay. So in this case, we only have two incidents, but you can see they're prioritized. So we have this one that's like priority 1000. So I'm going to go ahead and, and click on this. So we see, oh, by the way, we see this is uh, XDR Analytics. So that's the analytics tool uh, I was talking about. And when I click on that, we get this little uh, drawer. And I think this is cool because instead of just like exploding with another screen, full information, it just gives you a nice summary. So there's a progressive elaboration of information as the analyst starts to drill in. So here we can see, remember what I was talking about, the TTPs, the fingerprint. So here's our TTP fingerprint, very nice. Right. And here we just we have a just a description. We can see what assets were involved. And so we can see there's some email. Remember, I was talking about the emails. I think I was talking about the emails. And then you have endpoints. It looks like we have some PCs up. Oh, looks like we got a domain controller. Let's let's go into the incident detail screen. So now we're going to progress. We're going to elaborate a little more. We're going to have a little more information to work with. And in this case, now we can see a relationship diagram. And so this is just shows the relationships between the entities. I'm not going to dig too far into that. This is just a brief demo. And if you look down below that, you'll see we have three columns. We have our assets, all the assets that were affected, all the observables that were discovered, and all of the IOCs that the analytics tool derived from those observables, right? So for example, we have this PowerShell cloud download string, like that doesn't sound very good. So, so I see some things that, that, that uh, don't look good. If we look at, let's look at some more of these indicators here. Yep. We have, oh, Active Directory database extraction attempt. Oh, yeah, we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of unsavory things happening here. And you can see this gives you a lot, as, as an investigator, you can see, for example, we can actually hover over this. I don't know if you can see that. Let me scroll up a little. If you hover over this, it'll actually show you, for example, in this case, we can see that somebody ran a PowerShell script and you can actually see the command line arguments that they use in the PowerShell script, which is like ridiculously cool, right? So pretty clearly, this is a pretty standard looking breach to me. So it got, it got in through email, got on an endpoint, someone ran some PowerShell scripts, and then they start going after their domain controller. So I'm going to skip detection and I'm going to just go ahead and go uh, straight into response mode. And what I wanted to show you is, remember, we talked about Pickerel, right? So we have identify. So we had the prepares done, but now we have the identify, contain, 
eradicate and recover. So this is the this is the built-in playbook. So if we look under identification, notice so some of these I just say like add note where we can just add some information in as we're stepping through these steps in our playbook. But notice under document and notify, we actually have an execute option. So this is an example of where is you can go in and replace that add note with an automation. And there's a bunch of them that you know that come with this tool. And you could write your own or get something one from someone else or whatever. But in this case, this this would actually if you if you fire this. It's going to open a help. It's going to open a service now ticket, and, but you can make it do anything you want it to do, really. And similarly, let's do one that's got some context. Like in this case, uh, we're we're working our containment phase of our incident response. So let's go with uh, containment assets, right? So if we select that, that's actually going to bring up the assets that were involved in this breach, and we could select these. And if I selected execute it's going to go out to the EDR endpoint detection response product and it's going to it's going to quarantine those assets for us and we could do the same thing like if we wanted to do like for example IPs that would be relevant to a firewall so we could go if we could wire something in that would go out and program some a rule in our firewall or even better you could use a uh, you could actually use a do I see it in here okay it's in here somewhere Ah, feeds. So you could actually just use you could actually just add it to a feed, which would be then is being ingested by your firewall. So that would be a really nice way to do it too. So again, all those steps now, it's all kind of everything's integrated into your playbook, right? And notice we now have recovery listed in here, right? So this is as you can see, there's not too much in here, but there's there's potential. We'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. And then this is that the work log I was talking about. So if you're the if you're the the person that's in charge, you can see over time who's doing what and when. So I, I think I think that's really cool. Okay, let's go ahead and wrap up here. To summarize, detect and respond in hours, not days. We our tool performs automated investigations, automated incident creation. We use Pre-program playbooks that have one-click automated responses inside of them, and everything is logged. Okay, now near future capabilities. So here's an interesting idea. So say you have a a, a grouping of assets, uh, endpoints, for example, and you start getting indicators, like maybe like a receptionist machine is suddenly port scanning a subnet, <laughs> right? Uh, so you could. For example, you see that indicator, but you haven't necessarily determined whether that's really an incident yet. But you could, but well, let's let's just say for the sake of argument, you can say, okay, let's go ahead and just take a backup snapshot of all of the endpoints in that building, right, or that network segment. And then it does turn out that that machine uh, got uh, compromised, and now it was spreading all the other machines. So now you have a a you have recent backups. To restore the machine state on those machines, so that's going to uh, accelerate your ability to recover from an incident. Because you, when you're imaging the machine, you can actually just restore from a, a backup that was taken just a few minutes before the machine was was pwned. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, the SOC assistant that's pretty that, that's kind of self-explanatory. That's just like a auto, like a little AI generative AI helper for the SOC analyst. Uh, dynamic playbooks. This is an interesting idea. So the idea is that you would have playbooks that would be based on the actual uh, um, breach, you know, the whatever is going on. So you would actually have a playbook that's just got actions in it that are specific to what's being seen. I think that's a, a really interesting idea, and I can't wait to see it. So that uh, that takes us to the end. I know this was kind of a long video, and if you've uh, stuck around this long, uh, thank you. And I hope this was really helpful for you, and uh, cheers. Have a good one.